Have you ever been so cold that your face is numb? Your fingertips and your toes are mere memories and you just want to be somewhere where there's some warmth. This flame would be so welcomed. There is nothing professional about what I'm about to show you. The heater, the wick, is a roll of toilet paper. That's it. The cheaper, the better. The fuel is nothing more than isopropyl alcohol, 91%. I don't recommend, nor do I think you should use anything less than 91%. And of course, you can pick this up at any drugstore. And the container is a one quart empty paint can with a lid. Now this is the ideal container because the lid fits tightly on the can. And that's what you want to do if you want to make these little portable heaters and keep them in your car, your conversion van, um, wherever you think you may need this in an emergency. Of course, you can't always get hold of a tight fitting one quart paint can. Sometimes you have to make do with what you have. This particular can of course came from Home Depot. Sometimes you have to use what's at hand. For example, you have to use a coffee can. This is a 11 ounce coffee can and keep in mind that the plastic lid is something you should discard or keep only if everything in the can is ice cold, okay? You're dealing with alcohol here. First thing you want to do is to remove the label, whether it's plastic or paper. Remove the label. It's extremely important. Number one, it smells pretty bad if it's burning. And number two, it is not very efficient if you're using the label. Next comes the toilet paper itself. One thing you have to do is to remove the core that cardboard core, you have to remove that. And I did it by squeezing the paper together. There was a little indent that was formed and I simply used my fingers and pushed it in like that. Kept pushing it in until it became a smaller core. And then I simply twisted it and pulled it all out. Once it was out, of course, then all you have is just toilet paper. You'll notice that it's a little bigger than the can, which is fine, it should be. So to get it into the can, I simply squeezed it and bend it as much as I can. And that way, what I did was to simply work it inside the can. It'll get in there, trust me. With a little bit of effort, it'll get in. If you don't have a one quart size paint can, then you're gonna have to use a coffee pen. By the way, just to get this out of the way, I know you're gonna put some alcohol on top when you tr first put it in because you wanna try it, right? Well, this is what's gonna happen. It's gonna burn the toilet paper. Now you know, so you don't have to do it. Once you get it in the can, and I'm gonna use the coffee can here for this demonstration. What I do, I put some rocks inside the can on top of the toilet paper. Now, Again, as I said before, the lid should be metal. If you're going to use a lid to turn off, shall I say, or to go ahead and cut off the flame, it should be metal, not plastic, because a metal container will not burn. Okay, I'm glad I got that out of the way. Now back to this can, all right? The can itself is the container. This is the container. It has to be metal. You do not want to use plastic. You just don't. Okay. In the can, I've used rocks. And I use rocks because I'm going to use that as my, my way of controlling the flame, the intensity of the flame. All right. Less rocks in the can will have greater flame. You understand? It's my regulator. Now we're going to add the alcohol to everything. Now I'll pour the alcohol in. Remember, it's a 32 fluid ounce bottle. 
and I'll pour it in and I'll watch it as it sinks down into the can itself and it'll do it you'll be able to see it's not a problem keep doing it of course and incidentally the prices that I have listed these are simply what I paid here in Virginia what the prices will be where you live will be different I'm sure the point I'm trying to make is to give you an idea what the prices of different things I did not list the price of coffee because that's such a variable it depends on what kind of coffee you like and all that sort of stuff the point is though you can get your roll of toilet paper in an 11 ounce can of coffee anyway back to this you keep pouring in the alcohol into the container and don't worry about the rocks you don't have to that's an optional thing as a matter of fact if you don't have the rocks you'll have a good intense flame so you may want to consider whether or not you want to use the rocks as I said I use the rocks as a way of regulating the intensity of the flame anyway back to the can you keep throwing I'm sorry you keep pouring the alcohol into the can until you can get no more in until you can see that the thing is full in which case you're really done if you had used a one quart paint can then you could put the lid on and seal it and it'll be fine to store in your trunk of your car or wherever until it's needed because I'm using a coffee can I do not have a metal lid to seal it the metal lid you see here is from the one quart container and it does not seal the coffee can now the next thing that I did and only because of aesthetics I did buy a clay pot because I did not want to put my container with my flame on to the garage floor by itself so I rest it in a container in a clay pot besides for aesthetic reasons I think it looks okay don't you so put it in the can put this into the container put this into the clay pot rather now the two other items that you should keep with your portable heater is somehow to open the can if you sealed it and somehow to light make a flame to light your portable heater and that's what I did now for this experiment I started at 1259 approximately one o'clock and I went on for approximately two hours I think and I wanted to show you the result I started at 114 and my little experiment ended at 314 in other words 1313 to 15 I'm sorry 1314 to 1514 all right so on we go onto the garage floor it went and then I lit my can my container with my heater and notice that the flame is not as intense as I wanted it remember I said now I'm using the rocks and I'm using the rocks simply to regulate the size of the flame so since this was not as intense as I wanted to be I simply remove the rock and make it bigger just like that this is an option of course you don't have to do that but I did it because I thought it would be a good way to regulate the flames now later on I will put and by the way yes I know my garage floor is pretty dirty but then you know bear with me okay just bear with me so that's what it, the flame looked like once it was lit and with my little rock regulators and this is the time inside temperature and the outside temperature you'll notice that by the way I used two-thirds of the bottle of alcohol maybe I could have used more I don't think so though so for two-thirds I had from 1314 to 1514 and you can see the correlation between the inside temperature and the outside temperature and keep in mind that the garage or the space rather was not insulated so there you have it I would welcome your comments and your suggestions because this I think could save somebody's life Thank you very much for watching and thank you so much for sharing.